these are glass not plexi and they are laminated and in the center of them is a 3m uh, security for film uh, and so that if you were to damage the screen you won't nonetheless go through the screen that's just super super strong now there's several things about this that's important first off what you're always doing is you fill up one side of the boat and then you drag the hose across the other side of the boat and you spill diesel and it's black and it's horrible so what we've done is designed that out but you also know that whenever you start to fill uh, fuel tanks, uh, it always rains, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's guaranteed to yep. rain. And what happens is water runs down the deck and mm -hmm. it runs straight into the deck filler, mm -hmm. unless they're raised like this. And then with them raised like this, you're not gonna get any water ingress. You're gonna get water into here, which is gonna drain out there. So all is kept good and clean. Okay. Oh, nice. There Very are nice. three, tanks not two uh, in a Kraken uh, and the central running tank um, is uh, not able to be filled other than f through the fuel polishing system yeah it means you can't have somebody mistakenly filling your pure running tank that will eliminate 80 percent of all problems on boats uh, it means no idiot can mistakenly fill that and it, as you know, it's not even just a question of getting bad quality fuels these days. It is also biodiesel mm -hmm. issue. And the biodiesel uh, has 10 times the water content of uh, fuel, fossil fuel. Uh, um, and that it means that even when you're putting good quality fuel in, you are going to get water in your tanks. Now the water, uh, as you will know, sweats out and it gets hot and it runs down and it collects in the bottom of in the, the tank and then you get diesel bug. In the Kraken system, since you are polishing yep. internally tank to tank, so you can polish within one tank and eliminate all of that, or you can polish one tank to port to starboard, or you can polish port or starboard uh, straight into the uh, running tank. It's therefore impossible in a Kraken to run on uh, poor grade fuel. That's makes good. a big difference. Really, really, really nice. Coming further back, <clears throat> one of the issues that uh, everybody has is uh, uh, how they're going to get on and off of uh, the boat over the sides. And if you pull the trigger here, oh, there's a little okay. button there towards you. Towards me? Oh, okay. That's I it. was trying to pull down. Okay. And nice. now. Now you've got a gate to get onto the boat and you've also got to get, you've got a ladder to come up as well. Yeah, that's nice. Okay. And you make it as an option to have a lifeline like this all the way? You can have it if you want to have a, a I, I don't favor it myself, but you can. Um, why I don't favour it is I don't think that people should, uh, crews should uh, clip on to the side rails and, and walk around. Yeah. What they should be doing is clipping on to the jack lines in the centre. Mm -hmm. um, and I think with a top, lie, uh, with top stainless steel um, uh, safety line, tubed safety line, I think that uh, there's a tendency for people to not do that but, you have but it's an it, option so. but it's an option and you have to clean it too yeah. Yeah. that's what you have to clean it so. <laughs> polish it clean. that's exactly. a lot more to polish <laughs> you should have a life raft on the boat but of course to a lot of boat design it's really kind of a, an afterthought where it's going to go and the place they always wind up going is either on the foredeck which is an inaccessible place and ludicrous place to have uh, to go if you are in an emergency situation and further you, then the next is on the back rail <coughs> but there's a, a big problem with that if you think about it if you have it on the back rail you are then trying to launch uh, the life raft in the same area that you've got the dinghy and the davits underneath it and it's not in our view the right thing to do but so what we've done is we have a dedicated life raft locker 
that will take up to an eight man eight life man. raft. Okay. You know, most people go for six mm -hmm. in this size boat. But it's also the place to put the grab bag. Bitch, bitch it doesn't bag. make sense to have a grab bag down there. No. Or in another locker somewhere else. Because if you gotta go, you gotta go now. Right yeah. now, now, now. And so the object of the exercise in terms of a life raft launch is to take the life raft out of the locker. It will be stacked inwards. It's mm -hmm. in a valet, so it's mm -hmm. lighter. Take it to the side gate, drop the side gate over, keep the crew in the center of the boat here, in, in the, in the, in, also in protected area, and then you embark onto the life raft at midships. Because boats don't sink in the middle, they sink at the bow or the stern, mm -hmm. but they are definitely gonna sink one or other of those. Mm -hmm. And the place that is never gonna sink is the middle. So that's where you want to have the crew. And whilst in a Kraken, it's the least likely scenario to happen because all of how we build the boats and all the rest of it, nonetheless, you know, if you're gonna do it, you should do it properly and think about it. So that's, that's what you got there. I'm gonna show you now, a, a, just twist it, that's yep. it. A very fundamental element of a Kraken yacht. This is the, yep. Now that's the alpha rudder system. Mm -hmm. The first thing that you're going to look at is the fact that the rudder shaft is of a similar nature to that of a small battleship. That's uh, an incredibly heavy four inch uh, stainless steel uh, rudder shaft. I don't think I've seen one like this before. Never. <laughs> there, you, what you have is a unique approach to the fact that it's a good idea to always be able to steer the boat. Bear in mind that uh, the, the ultimate objective is to always be able to steer the boat and never have, it, uh, have the steering compromised. Now, as I have experienced, there are some things that happen out there that can really challenge that. So you can you will see the skeg set up and the alpha rudder set up when we go on the outside of the hull, when we go to the yard. But what you've got here is an entirely different approach. That gator, uh, when removed, which by the way is above the waterline, uh, that uh, gator exposes a top-down installation of uh, the main rudder bearing and the point is that that rudder bearing can be removed at sea and mm -hmm. serviced and greased and put back in without hauling out. When you go off around the world in a blue water cruising yacht you're going to find that one of the big restrictions is anywhere that you can haul out as we were just hearing yeah. just from Rene's story earlier mm -hmm. and um, you should service that bearing once a year. So that means on every other sailing boat you've ever been on, that means you've got to haul yeah. out once a year. With a Kraken, you don't need to. You lift that bearing out, and if you want to replace that bearing, you can take the top bracket off as well. Lift. There's more work to do, but it you know, it's it's nuts and bolts. It's nothing particularly rocket science. And that bearing lifts right out, out over the top and can be fully replaced even at sea. Hmm. What you've then got above it is a steer. You, you can see you've got the steering quadrant there. Mm -hmm. And what you've then got above that is the top bracket. It means that on the steering system of a Kraken in the Alpha Rudder system, you have three bearings. One at the bottom, one in the middle, one at the top. Mm -hmm. And that uh, is uh, the ultimate rudder system for, uh, from a safety point of view. So the boat, is, uh, the boat is finished, hasn't used all of the, the lines. We'll take those off before they go. To be able to show the boat, we've removed a, uh, a, a platform that goes over the top here. Yeah, to protect uh, it. Just yeah, to protect it, so, so stuff doesn't fall into it. Do you have we've the removed option, that to be able to show that. Huh? Do you have the option of putting on another autopilot, a backup yes. autopilot? Yes, um, yeah, that's, 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 hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> the next thing is the approach to the autopilot. Yeah, yeah. Because the autopilot is nearly always in this aft lazarette somewhere. Mm -hmm. 
but that's a mistake. Mm -hmm. It's a mistake for two reasons. Of course, uh, you may well want to open these hatches uh, when you're at sea or in port, and it may well be raining, and so you automatically, uh. this area is a damp area. Mm -hmm. That's problem uh, number one, is now you've got very nice finicky uh, electronics all sitting in an area where there's, where there's a presence of high humidity. So that's issue number one. Issue number two is what you would always, nearly always do, is have it mounted on this back bulkhead. And there inside is the master cabin. So now you've got what is referred to as the autopilot cow. <laughs> uh, 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 mm, mm, all the noises you can imagine. And we've eliminated all of that because okay. the autopilot uh, is in our Kraken engine room. Uh -huh. When we get to the Kraken engine room, that's inside here, <sighs> inside that's there. That's what I'm gonna drool a little so bit. So your drive system is, is there. It's accessible, it's dry. Mm -hmm. And so more prizes are won there as well. So that's uh, I'll shut that one down. And oh, ah, no, 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 no yeah, one okay. more, one more. <clears throat> if you have need to, despite the Alpha Rudder system, if you have need to access uh, the emergency steering system, you are going to find that what the integral parts of it are is laying in the bottom of the lazarette underneath all of the gear that's on top of it right so we designed that out and here it is in its own holster system here um just here amanda mm -hmm. that's the auto part uh, that's the uh emergency steering system yeah this undoes with a winch handle here mm -hmm. yeah i said that a spigot drops down onto the top of the quadrant mm -hmm. and it sets up and that runs right the way forward to the helm. It's a huge long rudder. It goes to the helm. It, it so it goes all up the way. and over. You, wow. you, you there's operate three pieces it here. sitting uh, at the helm. Yeah. It's a huge, because of two reasons. I challenge most yacht builders to tell me who it is that is going to be able to handle that a uh, 40 foot, 50 foot, 60 yeah. foot boat with a stubby little tiller. It's not possible. So what you need is you need a big lever. Right. And you also don't want to be sitting out here. Who knows where it's going to happen? It could happen halfway across the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. So we've just eliminated that issue as well. That's cool. Okay. It's just really about thinking about all of these stuff. Most of it is because somewhere along the line it's happened to me. <laughs> Right, let's go to the cockpit now. Oh, what's on the oh, side? Oh, one more thing. Yeah. One more thing. Um, with the Solent rig, uh, with the Solent rig, what you've got is the uh, ability to choose the right sail for the wind strength. Well, on a, a non, an ordinary sloop rig, uh, the Genoa is obviously the upwind sail and it's the downwind sail and it's the everything sail so it needs a huge range of track mm -hmm. uh, to be able to uh, properly uh, sheet it and cleat it you don't need that in a sonant rig uh, and one of the things that uh, if you look on this boat alongside us here you have this enormous long genoa track can you see yeah right now <coughs> That is then operating, as you can see here, uh, obviously outside the shrouds, but mm -hmm. also when you're running and you're not hard to the wind, your sheets have got to go over the rail. Mm. You may have noticed that on uh, Kraken, the lifeline height is much higher than CE, much higher. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna just uh, show you that. This rail is in fact the correct size for CE. And that's really convenient just behind the back of your knee. So if you really want to find a way of flicking yourself overboard, right that height is exactly the one you don't want. So on a Kraken, it's massively high, right up to your thigh. That, if we didn't solve this problem as well, would give you a problem of the sheet chafe as it's going over the line. Mm -hmm. But the sheets for the Genoa on a Kraken come from the sail down to the shortened track 
let me cover that element of why it can be shortened in a second and then back and onto uh, uh, onto the winches how can it then be, be shorter Genoa is a hundred and forty percent and the jib is a hundred percent and what would ever be the point of reefing a Genoa uh, in furling a Genoa in past the the sail point of 40%, 40 percent mm -hmm. down to 100 once you get to 100 you go, you go to on this. the jib yeah and when you want those smaller sail areas is more often than not when you're going upwind so you don't need this long track so you solve another problem as well right cool very nice in terms of its uh, uh, aesthetic appeal it is much greater to appeal because you're looking, it mirrors, it mirrors uh, on the side of the boat, it mirrors the, uh, the uh, boom, uh, and it provides really excellent roots as so hand holds. The boat comes down with this, right? With that, yes. And I will have had the discussion, you may have said to me, I'm thinking about uh, rigid and you can't have rigid, we can, there's several configurations. But I like, I like I this. I wanted to show you this. Because it is such a bloody good solution. Yeah, good. And, and you put solar panels as well? Yeah, you can put solar panels on it too. And as you can see, just feel it. That is strong. This yeah, is nice. totally strong. Yeah. yeah. And it can come down and, for and, a and, hurricane. And and these panels, of course, we've put them in because the weather's poor at the moment. These panels totally remove. Mm -hmm. We'll show you tomorrow. They zip out pretty easy at They zip out very easily because if I show you here in the top of the the track uh, i noticed it's in that it's, yeah yeah <laughs> so we've cut a track in the top of the stainless steel so this slides in that zips up that zips in two minutes no five minutes let's say five so minutes what is the standard of this the threading that you're using uh because it's all uv it is uv yeah okay. it's all uv yeah yeah okay because yeah, that's, you're obviously the only, time you've of, had that one before, yes, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, here's the same. Here's the same threading we use for the same manufacturer we use on uh, White years? Dragon, and she's now, although she does look a bit uh, sorry for herself at the moment because yeah. of the cleaning, but uh, that boat, uh, you know, that was up most of the time we were sailing 35, 37,000 miles. She's now sailed fifty odd thousand miles. And uh, and she's now latitude, four years old. With this, uh, uh, well, all latitudes, I guess, because yeah, yeah, south, and south, north. south and north. We, yeah. was, we we sailed Cape Town and Cape Good Hope in winter. Uh, that was uh, an interesting experience. You get a bit of weather down there. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. And current. Yeah, and, and current. current. <laughs> the Angulas current. Yeah. Oh. Now, here you, you will have noticed as you've crossed across. We've uh, provided a nice step, step. to make mm -hmm. it easier across and a step once you get in here. Mm -hmm. When you stand at the helm, Amanda, uh, no, just stand, I mean, at the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, stand at the helm. So you can sit at the helm. <laughs> just saying, just looking, I just yeah. wanted you to see there are brace points yeah. on either side yeah. so that when the boat is healed, you feel still comfortable and easy. To, too. Yeah, yeah, it's really easy. This is, of course, our own design. There's not much to say about this, except one thing. What goes wrong with plotters <laughs> is the connections in the back of the plotters. Yeah. And so what happens, you take this screen off, you've got mountains here, you lift the screen out, you spray them up, you wiggle them about, you put in, it's all working, you put them in back, and as you put the last bit back, because you're disturbing the wire, it goes off again. Mm -hmm. So the simple solution. From thing on the back. <laughs> is have full access at the back. Ah, bingo. Very nice. Okay. Just a couple screws. Yep. And so you just, uh, Allen, Allen screw or hexagon screws, uh, take that off and uh, away you've got full access. To <coughs> and look, when you're shifting here, you kind of, you can see. There's no underneath on like the general. Right, exactly. Where you, right, exactly. Can where you can't right. see yeah, anything. Yeah, you're strange places. Oh right. my goodness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and you can see uh, there's something else very important. You're not important. gonna bump it when you move by no. because it's protected. And you've got this this uh, handlebar across the top because you've got to bear in mind it, it's all very well showing a boat in a boat show and everybody goes, oh, this right. is lovely, we can sunbathe here. Yeah. But when the boat is healed, you're gonna be pulling yourself 
by hand into the cockpit, aren't you? You're going to climb. You're climbing, aren't you? When the, mm -hmm. when the right, and you need something to hold on to. If you don't have something like this, it's the bloody instrument or the wheel. Right. It's just something you just have to think and about. There's, uh, there's one really important thing right here that I've realized. Look at the size of those cup holders. <laughs> yeah, with, drains. With, with drains. With drains. Yeah, American speaking. Can you fold that wheel? Uh, you could have a folding wheel. Yeah. Um, but, you, but also it's quite easy to remove it. Yeah. But you can have a folding wheel. It's, Lumar do a folding wheel. It's huge. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's yeah. Now, that's something to, to mention, right? And it has to be borne in mind. Yeah. We have already understood and for sure uh, it's mandatory for a cruising boat that her rudder system must be fully protected and therefore you have to have a skeg. The uh, alternative to having a skeg is a full length keel with a skeg hung, with a keel hung rudder, but then that uh, is quite a heavy old boat and it won't sail so well. Um, but it does mean that the rudder uh, is an unbalanced rudder. You just mentioned it, which is what made me focus on it. You do need a good gearing against the, uh, the forces on the rudder. It cannot be claimed, although the helm is very well balanced on, on this boat, but it cannot be claimed to be a fingertip uh, steering system as it is on a, a balanced rudder because it's an unbalanced rudder. Uh. That does mean you've got a helm in your hand. Yeah. It does mean that. And we've had customers that have, have said, they've, they've understood then, oh, you know, the helm is heavier. Yes, the helm is heavier. It's an unbalanced rudder. You need to bear in mind that the alternatives is an is, and it is only one alternative, is an unbalanced rudder and an unprotected rudder. And people simply have to decide, okay, uh, do I really, what is the merit of being able to do this on the helm and steer the boat? One finger. What's the merit? What's the point of that? And on top of it, everything else, you know, for cruising folk out off sailing around the world, 95% of the time you're an autopilot. But my question is, does that make the autopilot struggle more? Yeah. No, because we've geared, because we've affect, we've 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 uh, we've um, uh, affected that, or we've considered that. I should say is okay. the right word yep. in the gearing of the autopilot. It doesn't make it struggle more. It does mean you need a more powerful uh, uh, yeah. autopilot. Uh, exactly. So, how much power consumption do you have from that then? Um, okay, uh, Phil will have to give us the figures, but. Not so that it's going to make <laughs> all ele other elements are also fit in Balanced, with that, which yeah. is the battery capacity. Yeah. So it's not going to be something that you're going to be, oh, 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 I've got to keep running the generator to power up. No, not right. at all. The expectation is you're going to run the, it depends what other auxiliary power systems you have, but the, uh, the expectation is you're going to run the generator once a day. Yeah. Um, For how long? A, a couple of hours, something like okay. that. That's it fine. depends. A huge amount. Consumption. You know, it, yeah. well, consumption, uh, and and also how much solar power you've got, and, and 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 other stuff like that. So why is the companion whale centered in the boat? That kind of shocks me. Yeah, you, you'll 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 see when we go down. That's to be able to give uh, a U-shaped diner, um, which I think is uh, you, you'll I hope you'll like very much. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll go and do that in a second. Now, the other things to mention that are worth noting here, um, as you can see, when you're sitting here, when you're sailing at sea, you're very, very well enclosed. Yeah. Uh, and you can have extra panels uh, that will extend that if you want to right the way through. In practical terms, you won't want to be do doing that uh, when you're under sail right. because you're going to make operation of the winches right. more difficult if you do it. But in port, but when and you're in, sitting around, uh, you'll want it. Uh, in port and in, uh, you know, when you're at anchor and so forth, uh, they can, this can be fully enclosed. It's with rain and everything. Yeah. Um, when you are sailing and standing at the helm, if you now stand <coughs> at the helm, you will notice you have got full and oh. clear vision. 
and yeah, off the absolutely. bow perfectly. It's, it's, that's a critical thing that people are trying to pretend doesn't matter anymore. It does, no, and it, it does. bloody does uh, matter. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really does. If you look from the helm position straight up, you can see yeah. you've got visibility. Yeah. We haven't absolutely. got them up. We'll show you more of that tomorrow. Yeah. And yet, obviously, you don't always want the sun baking down your head. So in this configuration, you had the rolled up. Yeah, that rolls up. Mm -hmm. Because this is uh, because this boat is um, uh, because this bimini is a rigid fixed bimini, it means we can install permanent lighting here as well. When you come to the cockpit size, uh, one of the things that <laughs> traditionally happened, and I can't really tell you I know why, but traditionally happened with uh, uh, with centre cockpit boats, um, you, you wind up with these tiny little centre cockpits. <laughs> as far as we're concerned, six people will be wanting to sit on this boat and eat dinner, six people can sleep on this boat comfortably, six people will sit in the saloon. And when you want to uh, have the, your uh, lunch, your dinner, they just lift up um, and same your side. Uh, uh, you can, that is a, a customer who wants it. Yeah. The, the, most don't. Uh, it's, it's 16 layers of exterior varnish to do that. It's oh. quite expensive. I would do that because otherwise it looks terrible. Yeah, it does it. look or really, Or what's really the other good option? Uh, it's what? oiled. Um, oil will keep the same colour, but obviously it doesn't look so bright and shiny. And this stain on it, you know, it's hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Do you have the you... option of a, of yeah. a, uh, a regular fiberglass? Uh, no, we don't. No. Uh, we think we could do it. We could do it in fiberglass. I think it looks rather. Or good. Corian. <laughs> or Corian, yeah. Maybe. Oh. Nice. Yeah. Cup holders. Again. There you go. Yeah. They're thinking about us. Americans. Okay. Well, and these bins here, these bins here, that one's the same. Yeah. Uh, they are also ice boxes. Oh, so in the drain? Yeah. There's a need to have one, a cold one regret wire. is that you cannot lean on this. Pardon? One regret is that it's not an angle. You, so you, because you spend most of your time laying well, I just put no, you, there. You, just can put cushion, yeah. you can fit a cushion here, and, and that can be a wedge shaped cushion. Yeah, yeah we no, we, we've got that one uh, too. What we're going to do on the Mark II, uh, I think we, uh, sorry, <coughs> on the 004, I think we have it, but we definitely have it on the 005. We're going to have, it's a, mod, it's a low line fiddle uh, across here in glass. Uh, and that's just so that you can put stuff up there without it rolling off. Rolling off, off yeah. Just a little, little tweak that certainly occurred. Yeah, I think that'll be nice. Now, and the next thing you, you will spot from here is that although, again, there's work to do it, there's a kit to remove down below as well, uh, this panel here is fully removable. Mm. And that's so you can get the engine out if you have to. And via the engine, you can, uh, engine room, you can also get the generator out. Mm -hmm. And and over time that will happen. Yeah. About, you know. yeah, yeah. When you want to put this away, if we can just. Uh, yeah, those are the same. Those are the same potential. You'll see those. And then it does some flap about as well. Hand hold. Now. The fun goes on. Everybody hates washboards. No, you take yeah. the washboards out, the proper solution. Yeah. That is the proper solution. And not electric. And not what? electric. Thank God! Not okay, electric. wait, what were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at that. This is this took us weeks of engineering to get this right. Beautiful. This is balanced by counterbalance. Mm. And so it stays at the height you leave it. And that's really important because when the weather is really shitty, yeah. you should put the washboards in. But you don't because it's a big pain in the ass. Yep. You've got to take them out every yep. time. So what you do in a cricket, and now you go below, and now you push it down and you come out again. So nice. Wow. So you also see, you, I saw you filming a little while ago, massive drains. Yes. Um, the cockpit. Uh, under C E has yep. to drain. Uh, How many seconds? Anyway, uh, top of my head, I still no, but I think it's ten seconds. Mm -hmm. But uh, we want it to drain in half that time. 
Uh, and so uh, the, the, the importance of that is that if you uh, do happen to get swamped and pooped, uh, that wave weight is then holding uh, the boat down in the water and waiting for the next wave to come. Wave trains generally are running about, you know, in heavy weather, seven or eight seconds. And this cockpit, we want it to be empty in that time. But so that, before it gets through all of this, I mean, it's yeah, yeah, have yeah, to yeah, be yeah. a really <laughs> big swamp. <Yeah. laughs> I mean. But, but Amanda, you've got to understand the paranoia that I bring to this party. Okay, yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> I've done all of this stuff. <laughs> I've seen all these disasters. And I have then decided we make a boat that never suffers from any of them. Mm -hmm. We have a challenge. Who was that word? Yeah, yeah. Well, I hope not. I think not. Well, you can do anything you can. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. That, you know, you can't stop a boat going on a reef. No. no. But what you can do is you can make sure it, it sure as hell ain't going to break up any other way. And this boat won't break up any other nor will that one, nor any boat I've ever owned. You look at the rigging size, it's as thick as your thumb, you know. Uh, and that's a very, very important point. You don't have to be an accountant to realise that if you want to chop 10 foot of the mast off and put it deck step, you wind up having a much cheaper rig mm. because... So you kill step? Oh yeah. Okay. Because Only you said, way. You said deck step earlier. earlier. So I was, yeah. yeah I did was I say deck step earlier? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I beg your pardon. Yeah. I was wondering. You'll have yeah. to retract that. Or right. Yeah. Sorry. It, it's a kill step. Right. Uh, and so with a kill step mast, it's the only appropriate uh, way. So where will it break off though? Because that's the... <laughs> it won't. But if it were to yeah. break, it would be obviously above uh, above, above the deck. Okay. But the difference is with a kill step mast, you've got it braced at the bottom and you've got it braced in the middle. If you lose uh, a stay, uh, then you have a chance while you would take the weight off of the sail immediately that, mm -hmm. that this happened mm -hmm. uh, and love up to the wind if you can. But if a stay goes, it's not automatic that the mast is going to come down. Whereas if you have a deck, deck step, step mast, <sighs> it's coming down. Yeah, exactly. And there's no question it's coming down. Uh, I don't know if you remember, that was, uh, that was something I arrived at as a decision with the freedom, they, they used to be called freedom uh, yachts mm -hmm. and they were uh, a wishbone rig like a giant uh, windsurf rig uh, and they are unstayed mm -hmm. and they're unstayed because uh, their deck uh, their mast uh, keel stepped I nearly mm -hmm. did it again mm -hmm. so uh, yeah on a Kraken it, the, everything is done from a bomb proof standpoint but you can see and I, I want to just introduce you to this as we sit here look at how great your vision is all round mm -hmm. and yet because of the Bimini and so forth, uh, you've got uh, uh, good protection uh, at all times. And, and it's just sweet sailing. And you could sleep there's, here. There's no coincidence in that you, you either. Need a, you need a word. Uh, yeah. Amanda, there's no coincidence in the width of that seat either. No. Okay. For the reason, exact reason. That's exactly what I just did. You yeah. are going to do that. You mm -hmm. are going to want to sleep here. That's all we do. That's, that's, all, yeah. that's all we do. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah. It's, uh, it's meant to be ultra comfortable. When it comes to um, when it comes to another function, uh, you may have seen that uh, in uh, the videos that we did. Uh, this hatch here is a direct access to I, the, the galley. galley. I saw that, yeah. and, and that's kind of, it seems like a silly thing, and people laugh the when food. they see no, it. No, pass the food, it's right. nice. But you so, haven't got to dance all the way up around here. It flies everywhere. It flies everywhere. Straight out the hatch. This is plate size, <laughs> anyway. And also, of course, you pass a can out, or you pass a dinner out. We make sure that that's a big enough size to get that out and eat bowls as well. Yeah. Okay? So I wonder now if we can figure I, out how to rig up a, a lee cloth right here. Do you know, do you know, oh, that's great, you know. That's exactly what I've been thinking about for White Dragon. Because yeah. when, yeah, and you can do that, you know. How to do it is with just a line and a triangle. Yeah, from here to Because you there. don't need your feet. No, you know, no, you just need you, right here. You could have a, a, a an eye here, a yeah. lee cloth under there, yeah. one here, and you can make a nice lee cloth. We can do that I for think you we if should that's do that. what you want. We can, yeah, it's great. So, now we get to the best part. 